So I was talking recently about how there were two episodes of the special Sunday Stern show. Suttery John was going to do this new show. You know, he was doing what's bugging me about Hollywood. He was doing his uh, beer on the balconies, doing his political show. And then he had this idea. He's just like, I also have to do this show about the Stern. I, people can't get enough of him talking about the Stern show. Oh, I should point out. I was going to say this earlier. When you sign up for a Patreon or Supercast, I also put out these mini episodes. Whenever I go on the Drew and Mike show, I put out whatever my segment was on there. And I was on there yesterday, and we had a very fun segment about Howard Stern. He was talking about booking guests and throwing Gary under the bus. And it's actually really funny because it, it's right on the heels of us reviewing the Pelican Brief mm -hmm. video I did with uh, Blind Mike. So it's kind of a peek into that world of uh, more how much shit poor Baba Booey gets. They just does not deserve the poor guy. But by the um, way, Blind Mike and your guys show uh, or these show socials are great. Oh, thanks, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I like Blind Mike. Blind yeah, Mike is, truly was saying it's fantastic. almost as good as subreddit surfing. I don't yeah, think he was no, saying that at all. <laughs> had we met, had we met yes. before, maybe I would have said that. So okay. hold on, Carl, you're going to cover stuttering John material in this segment. I am. Yeah. Are you okay with this, Shuli? He's stealing your bit. It's <laughs> 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 fucking potato. Dude, it's kind of a shot's All right. fire. All right, let's go. All right, so it starts off. I'm going to play it right after the music stops playing, and this is uh, just an amazing intro with John's got his What's Bugging Me About Hollywood background on this new show he's doing. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> welcome to the Stuttering John's special Sunday Stern Show. And I just want to point out, you could look at yourself before you hit the the button to go live. Yeah. And his green screen's never centered in the back. He has to move his camera around, and his head's above the fucking screen. If he wasn't such an idiot, you'd say he's a comedic genius for <laughs> doing it this way. But there's just no explanation for it Fucks whatsoever it up every time sunday stern show and i don't have an intro yet i'm working on it <laughs> i'm not as good of an editor as our next guest there's the link if you want to donate paypal.me slash john melendez inc <laughs> why did i start doing this show it's very simple so many people friends you know family member everybody says john we love your political shows. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out, so many people are telling me how much they love my political shows. You know, friends, family members. What about fans? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> one group you left out. Fans. <laughs> yeah. No, no one's yeah. telling me yeah. that. people that feel sorry for you. <laughs> yeah. Two out of his three moderators enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. Friends, you know, family member. Everybody says, John, we love your political shows, but, but, what? We love when you talk about the old stories from the great, the greatest era of the Howard Stern show, in my opinion. Because we've never heard him. <laughs> Finally. Of Finally, John's going to open up. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a third book. <laughs> Tell all. Shitting on everybody. But no, now we need this show. For him to in, case you missed his, in case you missed his epic uh, seven-part series about the Stern show entitled What Bugs Me About Hollywood, you'll be <laughs> able to pick it up here. So... <sighs> His first guest on this new show is none other than the dynamic Scott Salem. I don't know if he learned this from Howard, but Scott is ratings gold. You want a microphone in front of his face as often as possible because it's just so interesting and compelling. Now, in this clip here where he's talking to Scott, because Scott's a Mets fan and John's a Yankees fan, mm. notice how distracted John is by the chat. He's constantly reading shit on the screen. Let's now, go Mets. Your Mets. <laughs> I, I have a bet with you. As you know, Stein. Yeah. I have a bet with Stein. Uh, uh, you know, about, um, you know, who who has the better record, Yankees or Mets. Yeah. At a, at a five-star restaurant. Uh -oh. And for a while, Stein was like, well, John, I'll just take you out. Now, everything changed, Scott. Gone. It's all. It's a. It's a new life. All right. 
The Mets ended with 101 wins. The Yankees 99. So John lost that bet. We now this is from August second or August 21st of 2022. We now we're in the future. We know he lost that bet. A five star restaurant. Does he mean a Michelin five star restaurant? There's no way John's paying no. for that meal. No, what? I think he means five stars on Yelp. Yeah, that's I what I'm thinking too. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking yeah. five out of ten stars. <laughs> he might have meant saver. five guys. <laughs> yeah, five five yeah. guys. <laughs> five stars. Five guys. You, you know what's the difference? <laughs> you know what I meant, Scott. <clears throat> so you saw how distracted he was, and he couldn't form the sentence he was trying to form because he's reading at the same time. Imagine if he had a real show with an earpiece in with producers talking to him. Because if you watch any actual talk show on TV, they have an earpiece in with producers talking to him and they have to keep their cool and continue to read the script as they go. Jump like, what? what? Fuck off. <laughs> Stop the hammering. Yeah. <laughs> Why is have... he so close to the camera? <laughs> John, <laughs> take another chug of like... beer right now with your pinky out. He's actually in a different room. That's just how fat he got. <laughs> it looks like he's close to the camera. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about the best era of the Howard Stern show. Like I'll say, I don't know what your opinion is. So I'm interested to hear in it. I thought like the, the best era of the Stern show it, it was era. 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 era is the things the Yankees make. Yeah. Era. Oh, here we go. Here we go. But, <laughs> uh, uh, don't worry. Don't worry. You'll fail. You guys will uh, fail. Uh, All right. What would you say is the best era in the? Um... I think they both have it wrong, right? Is it era the correct? Yeah, that's fine. Pronunciation, yes. like era. I, I mean, I guess maybe that's right too. I mean, if you're gonna nitpick centering John, we'll be here a long yeah. yeah. Like that, <laughs> we're not gonna get to anything. <laughs> era, yeah, because I would say it. It is that. It is the time. Like, like I was there during. Um, I was dead during the time of Jackie and I was the time during the time of Artie. And I think exactly. that was like, that was the best, like that was the golden era. Did someone so ask when the golden era was? No, of course no. not. Era. <laughs> First of all, no one asked. Second of all, he doesn't have the balls to say when I was there, it was the best time for the Stern show. He's just saying, I was there for Jackie. I was there for Artie. Those were the best era eras of the Stern show. <laughs> it's, biz it's bizarre because, right, because when you think about the eras, you could say Billy West. You could say, you know, Jackie after Billy left, even though they were both together on the show for a while there. And then obviously the next would be when they had Artie. But John's going, you know, that era when it was Billy, Jackie, and then Artie, that era? Well, well yeah, it's like most of Stern's history. It's most of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Hard to I'm going to go out on a limb and say that was some of the best stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, you, should know. Wow. you know what the best part of the Stern show was? Most of it. Well, okay. <laughs> Can't argue with that. And then listen to the leading the witness here when he's asking uh, Scott questions. Um, I tell you, Scott, sometimes I go back because everyone posts so much stuff from that golden age and how many, like, I want. You know, it's, it's like you don't watch, you just kind of listen to. But I was listening to one where I told Ganji to give you the interviews. Ganji just put them on your desk and then went to sleep. Didn't give you any me. direction. And then Gary then threw you under the bus saying you take too long to edit. And then you had to come in and argue with Gary. And But that was uh, always Baba Boo. He would always... You know, and you don't have to talk if you're not allowed, but he, he, he would always blame somebody else for his own mistake. Always. <laughs> Wasn't oh. Gary an asshole? Now you go. First of all, it, it, like the worst storyteller ever. Yeah, like no like the whole story sucked. And <laughs> and then and Scott's the person involved in it, and he's not letting him talk. And then at one point he goes, I, I don't know if you want to if you can talk about this or not. I can if you shut the fuck up and let me talk. Yeah, and Scott literally says that. He goes, There's nothing I can't talk about. John, yeah. John keeps saying, like, I'm not sure what you're allowed to talk about. And Scott keeps going, I can talk about whatever I want. <laughs> it's, it's a free country, of course. I can talk about whatever. And I love that John's talking about going back and listening to old episodes that he was on. 
Meanwhile, he's the reason why Howard 101 doesn't play anything with Suttering John on it anymore. If you loved it so much, you probably shouldn't have sued the company to make yeah. sure they would yeah. never play it ever again, you idiot. I think someone, <laughs> when he was working uh, for Stern, said to John, just don't talk. And he thinks that that was said to everybody. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not allowed to talk because I'm not. Yeah, it's a rule, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, of course, because John's an asshole, mm-hmm. he has to talk about his favorite moments with Scott losing his cool. Losing now, his now who's leading the witness? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> wait, wait for it on this question. My favorite Scott breakdown. Well, there were two. There's a lot. Um, too many. <laughs> uh, is is uh, is the one that you said? Um, uh, <laughs> He's really well prepared for this one, as usual. <laughs> yeah. And you want me to pay you, John, for what? <laughs> for that? Are we for playing that? to catch a dabbler here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it sounds What's like it. John say next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got to go with Durr. <laughs> Durr. <laughs> next. <laughs> All right. So now John's going to bring up two embarrassing moments of when Scott went off the rails. And then ask him if he regrets that behavior. Because <laughs> that's what people want to do. They want to be interviewed by a guy who's like, remember that time at work mm-hmm. that you totally lost your cool? Yeah. And you were a real fucking problem that day? Yeah. How do you feel about that? <laughs> do you ever look back and go, man, I probably shouldn't have got that angry there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> we should talk about this, too, because Scott and John did not have a good relationship on the show. They hated each other. I mean, especially Scott hated John. It's so funny you bring this up because, you know, Scott was a guy I reached out to after I left the show and was doing my own thing. And I I had an idea to do like to have him on to do like a block party recap thing. Yeah. And just go over some stories and some stuff. And, you know, we talked and we were fine. And he was like, yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm not doing any podcast. I'm like, okay. And then I would see him pop on John's thing and I'd be like. I know, I know how he feels about John. Like I know yeah. they have a history, yeah. and it ain't good. Well, you could see so it on I, his I, face I, during these questions. Yeah. It's like you know he wants to be like John. Let's talk about the embarrassing shit that you did. Why are we just talking about the times that I was embarrassed? I mean, I guarantee you, in the short time that I work with Scott versus the time that John worked with them, I made Scott more money personally than John ever did. That I can guarantee you. Wow. You know, based on the block party alone. I disagree because John takes credit for Scott making $30,000 for the push-up challenge. <laughs> I didn't even pull uh, that because we played it too many times. But John's like, and that was all me who made that happen. <laughs> Such a prick. He really is. He really is amazing. All right. So let's talk about Scott's favorite years. This is one of the dumbest things that John says right here. <laughs> no, I know. But it, 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 I don't know. I mean, do <laughs> I, I'm sure you're allowed to say, uh, you know, it, you know what your favorite years were. No, he can't say numbers. <laughs> Could you imagine an NDA that's just like the one thing you can't talk about yeah. were your favorite years on the show? Ixnay. <laughs> yeah. the ears, yay. I told you not to bring that up, John. <laughs> I wanted to talk the about it. Holy shit. The only way that would make sense is if he signed an NDA. Then the only thing was, don't ever go on Stuttering John's show. Then you can't answer anything. <laughs> yeah, then that would make sense. Letters. Then you, yeah, yeah. Then you go. <laughs> but, but again, this is right after Scott says, I can talk about whatever I want. And then John goes, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say this. What were your favorite years on the show? <laughs> <laughs> and then Scott, because he's Scott, goes on to say that the best years were from 1987 to the early 2000s, which again, it's a very big, broad range of time. Yeah. With a lot of changes that happened over that amount of time. Scott, I'm going to ask you a question, and I hope they don't break down your door and come and get you, but what was your favorite bit? Oh, look, can you answer that? Are you okay <laughs> to answer that? All right. So, yeah, the Howard Secret Service is at his door. Oh, shit. Yeah. Tell me. Don't um, worry, Scott. I have pro bono attorneys on retainer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you. So this is again talking about there's a there's a, a super chatter who wants to know about if they're keeping in touch with Ronnie and listen to the way that John answers this. Um 
Josh Coffee has a question. Uh, thanks for the two bucks. Uh, you guys keep in touch with Ronnie Scores, man. You know, I'm not, I don't want to get Ronnie in any trouble. So I'm going to say no comment because I don't know what the rule is over there, you know, and I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I don't know rules either. I don't know. I don't know. Are there rules? I don't know. I didn't have any rules. There's, there's not rules with talking to people, Sean. That's in, not, in it's not a mind. thing. <laughs> I know. But in his mind, he's so important that the board, the the whole serious board got together and put out an edict to stay away from this guy. If I catch anyone texting with stuttering John Melendez, that's your job. You're done. Well, now, remember, at this time, John was convinced that Gary watches every episode and reports back to Howard. Right. And yes. so what John just implied was that he does talk to Ronnie because I don't want to get him in trouble. I don't know what the rules are, which would imply he is talking to him because if he's not. Then he'd be like, no, I don't talk to Ronnie anymore. And then we found out, fast forward a couple months, because I just played this on the show, Doug Goodsteed and him are talking. He goes, yeah, Ronnie doesn't respond to me anymore. I don't talk to him anymore. So he implied that he's <laughs> talking to Ronnie, and he's not. I was going to say, I talk to Ronnie still. He loves the Uncle Rico show, and he does not talk to John. Oh, I so, bet he does. End of story. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet he does. So a lot of uh, stern guys who are enjoying the Uncle Rico show. Yeah. Which is which is hilarious, John. With his, let's, I don't know if you're allowed to say this or not, but have you texted with Ronnie the limo driver? Scott's like, of course I can say whether I did or not. I mean, we talk the, all the time. The answer for Scott is no, just because like no one wants to be Scott's friend, but it's not because there's right. rules from Sirius XM. <laughs> Shuey, I know you got to run. I'm going to um, I want to play one more clip here because because this is insane to me. Now we remember. 9-11. You're supposed to remember that date in this country. It was 2001. Sure Suttering off. John left the Howard Stern show in 2004. Okay? So I'm going to do the quick math in my head. Oh, he was still on the show at the time. John was there. In fact, he was in the studio in the first plane at the building. I remember this I happening. Believe he was one of the, I believe he was one of the first few to leave the building, too. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, yeah. So yeah. Let's listen to this, because... He gets a question from a listener, and he's dumbfounded by this. So no, uh, Scott Scott went bowling on 9-11. Is that true? I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> well, I tried to. Nobody called me. So I, I had Robin. You remember that. I had Robin. I took Robin home oh, on from, 9-11. Oh, really? Where were you? Yeah. Where, where were you, John? So... I just want to point out, because I'm a Stern fan, that was one of the most famous broadcasts Howard's ever done, was 9-11. They went until well after noon, and mm -hmm. he was reporting everything as it was happening, and I was glued to the radio that day, as many people were. Like All of the mm -hmm. fans know this, that Scott brought Robin home, and that he tried to go bowling, and, and all of these things. And John's like, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like, Then why are you pretending to be an insider? Because I know right. this stuff, I, just from being a listener. Robin riding with Scott in his car and her getting dropped off at the mall was almost as intriguing as 9-11 itself. <laughs> yeah. The next day they as came the in and like, all right, enough about Osama bin Laden. So wait, where did you leave Robin? And then what happened? <laughs> yeah. You were in his car, Robin. What did it smell like? He had bowling balls in his car. Like it was amazing. Correct. And suddenly so John's going, Wait, you tried to go bowling? And of course, that's going to embarrass Scott. And John's not even picking up on these social cues. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, you went bowling? And Scott's like, yeah, I tried to go bowling on 9-11. Which is, you know, in hindsight. What's your average? <laughs> <laughs> and this was on uh, Stern Show? Uh -uh. <laughs> What's your average during terrorist attacks? <laughs> <laughs> How many strikes? <laughs> I try to keep up with the terrorists with my strikes. <laughs> All right. Hey, Shuli, I want to thank you so much for stopping by because we are promoting DabbleCon. Yes. The Uncle Rico Show and Who Are These Podcasts will both be uh, live podcasting in front of a live audience at the Comedy Club on Saturday at 2 p.m. It's February 4th. WATPlive.com for tickets. And, um, of course, you are running the whole Shuli Network. Yes, we are uh, growing <laughs> one show at a time. Uh, this yeah. network is just getting bigger and better. We got a lot of things coming. And uh, thank you to everybody for the support. And, and thanks to you guys, man. I mean, uh, you guys really got the ball rolling for uh, for all of this. So I appreciate it. 
Love you guys. I'm excited for Rochester. It's going to be uh, an epic two days. And the fact that, listen, I've always said it. The fact that we sold 10 tickets for this dumb idea would have been a victory. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I know you admit you only sold 10 tickets. <laughs> we sold 12, <laughs> Cardiff. <laughs> the fact that we sold more makes it even more insane. So Setting I'm expectations low. Shuli, yeah. I, I want to tell you something. So originally when you came on the show, you didn't want to talk about Stuttering John. In fact, yeah. I had a phone call with you ahead of time just to see, because I know you know these people were goofing on. And you went, no, no, I'm taking the high road on that. And eventually, John did enough. He pushed enough buttons that you're like, okay, fuck this guy. Gloves are off. Let's go. I ding, am excited ding. to tell you, there is another extern staffer who reached out to me this week who has never talked shit about Suttery John, who said, I'm in. Let's go. Do so, I know this staffer? Oh, oh, you definitely do, my friend. Baba Booey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Can you imagine? Uh, Baba Booey's numbers would put us all to shame. Forget it. Forget yeah, it. Story. The stories those te- those teeth can tell. Um, oh, all right, boys. I gotta go do Uncle Rico. Uh, Mr. Shuli is my thing early on in the show. No, no, no. We'll wait for you. We'll right. wait. I'll hang out here for. I'll hang out with these losers for a while. <sighs> you got it, pal. Holy shit! I'll I'm lose, I was about to lose everybody. To yeah. the Uncle Rico show. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's messed up, man. <laughs> Not cool. All right. We have to give away DabbleCon VIP passes. Yes. I heard that they're giving mm-hmm. away some VIP passes that people couldn't use. So, um, uh, all right. This is a quick thing about uh, Artie Lang because Scott was on the Stern show when Artie had his um, addiction problems, mm-hmm. we'll say. And John wasn't. But it doesn't mean that John wasn't there to save the day because he certainly was. Already, did, you know, I, I, I was, I was already meltdowns. Yes, I was. Yeah, I, so I didn't know any of that stuff. I, you know, I heard it. I talked to Artie. I called him after I heard it, and I said, Artie, please don't use, don't use. And he promised me he wouldn't. But then we saw where that went. He, wow. didn't, he didn't listen at all. I know. I can't believe he's not a uh, AA counselor. Yeah, or an AA counselor. It's amazing. I, I go, don't, dude, don't. Seriously, don't. Oh, don't use. Don't. Don't. Use. I just heard use. Yeah. I, I, I'm bad. Fuck. All right, I'll try and remember. <laughs> John. John's probably wasted. Too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, Artie, listen, man. Uh, you want to get a beer sometime, but also. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do drugs. <laughs> Losers do drugs. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to talk about Tom Giassano. Now John is not a fan no. of Tom Giassano. You know who is a fan of Tom Giassano? This guy. Mm-hmm. Fucking love Tom Giassano. So this is going to get a uh, a huge laugh out of John that's wildly inappropriate and unnecessary. What were your thoughts on Tom Giassano? Who? <laughs> And of course, I played that clip so I'd have a nice thumbnail for the YouTube video. <laughs> it's always awesome. It's always oh, nice to have. Always sl- thinking. It's always nice to have a pale slimer <laughs> in your uh, your thumbnail. This is why Tom Giassano is the man. It's been said by our boy Muttering Jay that Tom is the original dabbler. This is why. I remember once, Scott. I don't know if I ever told you this. I asked Tom for a raise. And he, you know, he had cancer. Remember when he had yes. cancer? Yes, I know. And I asked him for fifty thousand a year. And Scott, this is when I was. Why did he raise years. his arm for cancer? And what? It's <laughs> a good question. Maybe he just had to scratch his armpit. He does have some itchy things going on. And I asked him for fifty thousand a year. And Scott, this is when I was there for ten years. And what? You, yes. you asked for that much? Are you yes. have fucking kidding me? <laughs> So I asked him. Oh man! I asked him for fifty grand a the year. Nerve, I think I was making like forty. I think I was making forty-two thousand, and and I asked him for fifty thousand a year, and he went, "John, I'll die of cancer before I pay you fifty thousand a year." And he almost did. But here's a guy. This is where I don't get it, John, uh, Scott, because I because because I I don't think I've ever told you this, even in private. He. He was so superstitious that he, he like, he made a deal with God that if he didn't die of cancer, he wouldn't ever masturbate again. I don't know if you remember this. No. Oh, this was all on the air. That might but have been, then, but I, you know. 
But I, yeah, but then when it came to paying me, he he was willing to jinx himself, you know, and say that so he could save the company eight thousand dollars a year. Right. Well, you know. He wasn't jinxing himself. He literally would rather die from cancer than to give John what he wanted. He doesn't even care about saving the company eight thousand dollars. It's a big company. He just he would not... rather give eight thousand dollars to cancer. Yes, than he'd to rather John. hand over to cancer. Be like, multiply faster. <laughs> how much money do you need? Then to give John what he wanted. That's how much he despised John. That's the thing that John's not understanding here. When Tom G. sounds like fuck you, I'll never give you what you want. It's because he saw him as a no talent hack that he is. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Also, John was quite addicted to Tom. <laughs> he was constantly harassing him and being a douche and being obnoxious to him. And then he's just like, and then the guy wouldn't even fucking give me what I wanted. Like, yeah, well, it's kind of how that works, John. Sorry. Long live Tom Giusano. That's all I have to say. All right. Here's uh, one last clip that I wanted to play. And this is another question that comes in from the Super Chats about Scott Salem at the holiday party. And this is going back to uh 2021 mm-hmm. because this is 2022 that this happened at yeah J- jules david thanks for two bucks uh mm-hmm. c- can you tell us what happened at the last holiday party yeah they would serve liquor and they served food nice food very nice and we had a great time uh Sancy Kemp Trump, thanks for the seven bucks good stuff yeah john's such a mm-hmm. moron he doesn't realize that that holiday party was when Scott's new girlfriend was taking photos of Howard and then Marcy Turk came over and said, you can't do that. And they got into like a whole argument and then Scott lost his job after that. So the, the question was very much leading into what could have been an interesting story. Scott doesn't want to talk about it. Look how pissed he is too. See that look in his eye like you motherfucker. I'm not talking about that shit. And uh, John just is oblivious, like, oh, yeah, it was good food. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the $2, Jules. <laughs> Who are these podcasts?